Today, you're going to learn about a really effective and quick way to pick up a ball with a robot. I'm Broger Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now. And today, we're going to talk all about the pros, the cons, and why you might want to try using what's often called a rubber band wheel or a rubber band intake to be able to pick a sphere up and off of the ground. So at its core, a rubber band intake is a couple of wheels in the edges with a solid bar through the middle of the rubber bands that then runs into another wheel that then gets driven by some sort of motor. I have my motor driven on a chain just so that I can move this whole system up and down, get myself a little bit more compliance here if I need it. But for right now, this is good enough for what my purposes are. Now, in the corners of my design here, I have these little banded wheels that have these little knobs stuck out on the outside of them. And these knobs allow you to attach a rubber band the inside like that so that I can pull around. Now these rubber bands are really quite nice because they add a little bit of compliance built into the design. So as a ball comes in, you'll notice that it pushes against these rubber bands. And of course the rubber bands provide a little bit of grip that then it's able to kick one of these balls up and out as it spins around with that ball. Now, one thing to keep in mind on a rubber band and with intakes in general is that you typically want your intake rotating at twice the speed of your drive motors. So in this case, my drive motors are about 450 RPM. So I'm using about a 1200 RPM intake here. I could get away with about 800 RPM. You want about twice, maybe a little more, maybe about 900. And that simply just makes it so that when you grab a ball, you can take it and you can own it. That's a really big concept in FTC and FRC robotics. Now on my design, one of the big things to think about with an intake is just how much compression do you want on that ball or on that artifact or on that game piece? How much squish do you want to put in on one of these? And that's why I like to design mine, at least initially, with some slots. And you can see up here on my design that I have this really long slot that I'm able to actually shift this entire unit up and down as I need to so that I can do some rapid testing, shift the whole thing up and down, and then I can get different heights that I need to be able to have a more successful or a less successful point just by, you can see that I can grab this, I can pull it down, and I can move it up and down so that I can change my intake as I need to. Now this intake is certainly not perfect. One thing I do like about it is that it's really nice and wide. You have a really big effort to put in. My transfer or the actual ramp leaves a lot to be desired. This is just a sheet of polycarbonate that this thing moves up to. And as you can see right now, with my current design on this intake, I end up hitting this ball and I can only actually functionally intake from about this wide, as opposed to the actual width of my intake. So what I might want to do on this, I might want to consider adding in some sort of angle channel here so that I can have this ball as it gets near the edge, it naturally wants to come into the center and then roll itself up where it's capable to actually come out into the intake. Another one on mine is that my axles are not quite long enough. So I've had to use some couplers here to put them together. And the problem with this coupler in this current position is as this ball comes in, you can see that it compresses pretty hard against that coupler. So I would consider using a significantly longer axle in terms of doing this design. Uh, other things to think about improving, you may find that a wider wheel makes your life a little bit easier, or you might find a little smaller wheel makes your life a little bit easier. You could try different thicknesses of rubber bands. You could try rubber bands that don't have a knot in the middle. It's possible that that is affecting the design of this. But overall, this is a pretty functional intake, and it's a pretty uh, good way of pretty cheaply with some 3D printed parts or some laser cut parts to have an intake that is functional and pick a ball up and off of the ground. So let's go take a look at this in action. If you'd like to build this to yourself and get these CAD files, you can consider joining the community down below. If you got any questions, let me know in the comments down below and I'll give my best chance to be able to answer these out. Otherwise, best of luck with your next robotics project.